Scientists dig up a piece of prehistoric ember. There's a mosquito wrapped in it. Everyone knows that mosquitoes love to suck blood. So scientists took a sample of it right away. They took a sample of the mosquito's blood. And they found dinosaur DNA. It turned out that the mosquito had once sucked the blood of dinosaurs. And after eating and drinking, he was just about to rest on a tree branch. As a result, the mosquito was wrapped in the leaves left behind and became the amber it is now. Although the DNA sequence is a bit damaged, but in front of humans' high technology, it's not a problem. Using a supercomputer, scientists quickly found the loophole and then used the frog's DNA sequence to fill in the gaps and finally succeeded in cloning the baby dinosaur. Hammond, the tycoon, was very interested. He spends a fortune on an isolated island and plans to build a dinosaur park to make a fortune. But before it could open, there was an accident. A staff member was transporting a velociraptor when he was bitten by one and met his death on the spot. All of these incidents showed that the park was a safety hazard, and Hammond was very upset. Hammond was frustrated because the park couldn't open without a safety inspection. So Hammond approached paleontologists Grant and Ellie. He asked them to do a safety assessment of the park. Because, according to the rules, getting a signature from a renowned expert is tantamount to passing the safe inspection. At first, Grant and Ellie refused, but when Hammond asked them to fund their research, they couldn't resist. The next thing they know, they're in a helicopter headed for the island. They're accompanied by Muldoon, a mathematician, and Baldi, a lawyer. When they arrived at the island, they couldn't believe their eyes. They didn't realize that the dinosaurs that once existed only in books were right in front of their eyes. They were immediately intrigued. They went to the lab and couldn't help but witness the breeding of the dinosaurs. But when Grant saw that they were breeding velociraptors, he was nervous because they were raptors. So they went back to the raptor breeding area. The next thing they know, the keeper drops a big cow into the park. And the next thing they know, the park is in an uproar. In minutes, the cow was eaten without a trace. Everyone was in a cold sweat. If it had gotten out by accident, the consequences would have been disastrous. But Hammond says it's impossible. In addition to professional guards, the whole park is surrounded by a 100,000 volt high voltage power grid. So there's no way for the dinosaur to escape. But despite Hammond's claims, the scientists agreed. They thought it was a gross violation of the laws of nature. After all, humans and dinosaurs were 65 million years apart. If you put the two together, who knows what might happen? Hammond was embarrassed. He didn't realize that none of the experts he'd hired agreed with his efforts. But no matter, he had one last trick up his sleeve. To prove that the park was safe enough, Hammond decided to let everyone experience it for themselves. He even called his grandchildren to accompany them. The group rides into the park on a tour bus. The first thing they see is the Dilophosaurus. It's a carnivorous dragon. It spread venom to paralyze its prey and then feasted on them. But for some reason, the Dilophosaurus doesn't show up. They're disappointed. Then they move on to the Tyrannosaurus Rex area. And as expected, the Tyrannosaurus Rex is nowhere to be seen. What's going on? They released a goat to lure the Tyrannosaurus Rex. But to their surprise, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was still nowhere to be seen. They had no choice but to go to the next Triceratops area with a disappointed heart. And they did see a Triceratops. Although this guy was a little sick, it was enough to make everyone's eyes water. But just as they were getting excited, a storm came out of nowhere, and it was just bad luck. Aldi didn't want to leave, and said he wanted to stay with the Keeper to spend more time with the Triceratops. The Keeper says it's fine, he'll take Ellie back to the lab in his jeep. The rest of the team took the auto shop back the way they came. Little did they know there was no way back. Because at that moment, the programmer, Fatty, tampered with the park's control system. The next moment, the safety grid of the whole park was suddenly shut down. The sightseeing buses also lost power. It turns out that Fatty shut down the power grid in order to steal the dinosaur embryos. He lost his professional ethics for personal gain. He decided to sell the embryos to the black market, but he didn't realize that his retribution would come too soon. He fell into a ditch with his car. In a panic, he had to get out of the car to find a way out. But he didn't realize that this was the territory of the Double Ridge Dragon. The next moment, he ran into the Dual Spine Dragon. He saw the Dual Spine Dragon spewing venom in his face. He didn't have time to run away. Fatty was eaten to death. The power system of the park is now cut off. The others don't have the code to unlock the door, so they're trapped in the park. The little girl found a strange sight in the park. The little goat that was so lively just a moment ago has suddenly disappeared. While everyone was confused, a leg of a goat suddenly hit the roof of the car. Everyone realized that the goat had been swallowed alive by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It was horrible. The bald man was so scared 
that he wet his diaper and quickly hid in the toilet, not even caring about his children. The he left us. He left us. But Tyrannosaurus Rex shoot through the high voltage line and ran out of the park. Grant and Modoon were also too scared to move, because dinosaurs can only see things that are moving. If they move, they'll be spotted. But the little girl didn't know that, in her panic, she took out a flashlight and asked Grant for help. The result was tragic. The Tyrannosaurus Rex walked towards the light and stared at the little girl with his lantern-sized eyes. The girl backed away, unbeknownst to her. This action attracted the attention of the Tyrannosaurus Rex. One of the dragons cobbles the car, and it's tearing into the car. The car was crushed little by little. Grant uses a burning stake to attract the dragon's attention. Muldoon follows suit. He used the burning stake to lure the dragon away, while Grant went to save the child. The next moment, he was knocked over by the dragon in the toilet. Not only was he knocked unconscious, and the bald guy was also killed, but it was a worthy death. At least Grant managed to save the kid in the meantime. Afterwards, they climbed a tree to escape from the Tyrannosaurus Rex, and watched a group of crown dragons feeding. The dragons are herbivores and pose no threat to them. At dawn the next day, they continue on their journey. Little did they know what they'd find just before they set off. There are a lot of hatched dinosaur eggs here. This means that the scientist's experiment has failed. The dinosaurs have broken through the genetic barrier and are now free to reproduce. This also means that there is already a herd of dinosaurs on the island. Next thing they know, they're confronted by a group of chicken similar dinosaurs. These guys ran like crazy and came straight at them. They were so scared that they ran for their lives. But strangely, these guys didn't seem to care about them. Afterwards, they peeked at them and realized that they were also running away from the Tyrannosaurus Rex. They tried to escape from this place, but they're blocked by an electric fence. There's a 10,000 volt wall of electricity designed to stop dinosaurs from escaping. Grant picks up a stick and tries it. There's no electricity, so he took the kids and jumped over the wall. Unbeknownst to him, Ellie is in the switch room, restarting the power grid. As he watched the switches being turned on one by one, the alarms on the fence kept ringing. Grant told Ming to jump down, but Ming didn't dare to jump. The next moment, he was electrocuted. It's hard to escape, but he can't do that. Grant gave him artificial respiration to bring him back to life. Grant put them in the base cafeteria and went out to join the others. Unbeknownst to him, the velociraptors are on their way to the base. The little girl was in the cafeteria when she suddenly realized something horrible. There was a raptor outside the window. He and his brother were dumbfounded and ran into the kitchen to hide, but it was no use. The raptor followed the scent. This is not good, the two of them rolled and crawled, and moved to a different location, but they accidentally dropped a steel spoon, which attracted the attention of the raptor. This is the end of the line. Seeing that the raptor is coming, the sister quickly runs away. Unbeknownst to her, her brother was already too weak to run. By the time she realizes it, it's too late. Seeing that her brother is about to meet God, she bangs on the spoon to get the raptor's attention. And while she's at it, her brother takes the plunge. He quickly ran to the freezer and managed to introduce a raptor into it, then quickly locked the door and trapped it inside. With no time to lose, the two escaped down the hall to get help. When Grant and Ellie heard about the raptor, they broke out in a cold sweat and rushed into the control room with their children. But the raptors were right behind them and came after them before they could lock the door. Grant and Ellie rushed to block the door, but they couldn't. Seeing that the raptors are about to come in, my sister is also very clever and rushed to the computer to operate a blind operation. She didn't realize that she had accidentally unlocked the system. She accidentally unlocked the system. Not only did they unlock the security system, they also restored communication. They've successfully locked the Velociraptor out. They should call Hammond and have him send a helicopter. They need to get out of here. After that, they escaped through the ceiling and finally made it to the lobby. But the Velociraptor was already waiting outside. Everyone was nervous again. They jumped on the dinosaur model and tried to escape with the help of the model. The result was tragic. The Velociraptor was right behind them and jumped on the model. In the next second, the model collapsed and they all fell down. That's not the point. The point is that the raptors blocked their way. Both sides looked at each other, and the atmosphere was tense. At this critical moment, the Tyrannosaurus Rex arrived in time, and they barely escaped. Note that the Tyrannosaurus Rex isn't here to help them, it's here to hunt. While the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Velociraptor are fighting, they run for their lives. Hammond arrives just in time to meet them, and that's how they escape Jurassic Park. This is Steven Spielberg by Steven Spielberg. Is it possible for science to make humans think that they are the masters of the world, that they can dominate nature and transcend it? 
Of course, the answer given by the director is no. As you can see, this reflects the modern West's realization of the limitations of science. After a period of introspection about science since the 20th century, science cannot be an excuse for human arrogance. However, this does not detract from the greatness of science. After all, it is because of science that Spielberg was able to create, and we are able to see images of dinosaurs that lived at ease in nature 60 million years ago.